What is up, guys? And for as always, welcome back to another Walla Pokemon League battle. This time versus Tesla Mouse or the Houston Raichu, what you believe? So, um, with that said, uh, first and foremost, let's talk about the quality of the video itself. It is a bit of a washed out color due to me using a different program because XSplit has not been wanting to do what I want, which meant that I decided to use, um, well, a program that requires less RAM for my PC until I figured it out. So the colors is a little bit worse, though the quality is still in HD, but not as well crisp. So with that said, versus Tesla Mouse here, we haven't battled at all in Generation 7, so going into Swampy Bell, I was fairly scared because his team really does check me well overall, so I really need a win to make playoff here, and I'm going to go all at it because I need to pull out victory somehow, and versus Tesla Mouse, it's highly unlikely. I rarely win against this guy. He plays a bulky offensive team really well and can also rely heavily on his defensive responses, and from the looks of the team, he's definitely going to aim with that in mind. Uh, we see, of course, Skarmory and Mega Venusaur here, which are really tough opponents for or Pokemon for me to be dealing with. Then we see Lando, which definitely can be a Scarf variant or his C user. Slurpuff is there, Victini is there, which can very, very well be scoffed. But this is why probably definitely low, does make sense. It's either that or a life or variant with special on with Glaciate. That was something I'm really scared of. And Raichu overall makes sense. It was either Raichu or his cure, and both of them being very good for this particular Wi Fi battle. So I was really glad to see Raichu over Curem because that meant that we can, well, waver ourselves around that Pokemon a bit more better than we usually could. So when it comes to my team here, the Oriole was tough to bring in, well, not decide to bring a few certain Pokemon that definitely made sense. The Pokemon that aren't making here are Tentacool, um, what do you call them, Rapidash, uh, Decidueye, and Buswole. Um, mainly because Rapidash made some sense versus his Victini, and could we do very well specially orientated here towards the likes of actually his Venusaur and of course Landorus. Decided not to bring that, and I really, really was... It's debatably whether or not him or, or of course Rhydon. Rhydon clearly made it because it made the other Pokemon not use Stealth Rocks. Rhydon here is an Avalanche set which is fully, especially defensive, to be able to survive any Grass Nut or Surf from possible Raichu or Victini. And overall it does make sense for the Wi-Fi Bell itself. Uh, outside of that we have actually the Alola Ninetales with likely Aurora Veil. We have Jolteon, Quick Feet variant Modest because I don't need a Volt of Soul towards the Raichu, and quite frankly, I don't want to be forced to deal with any Scoffers, and Jolteon just deal really well versus Victini, so I didn't fear that Pokemon itself. And then we have Lopani, we have Garchomp here, which is a source as that with Drake MC. Was the bidding Yasha Berry ended up with Drake MC because it is able to actually have to one source dance almost KO Skarmory from full. So with that in mind, it felt that that was definitely something needed to bring. And then we have Metagross. Metagross here, Shookaberry, able to, oh, and enough crep to speed, outspeed a plus two, uh, or a um, plus two speed EV DM Venusaur. So yeah, very, very maximized here. Be able to deal with his defensive core, and I don't, I don't care about this offensive Pokemon at all. So with that in mind, I got a lead off with Rhydon and basically hope to get my rocks up. So with that, let's go. So from the get-go, he leads off with Raichu, which is quite right. Uh, I am forced out to go for Earthquake. I really need to have this Pokemon dealt with if, uh, because it outspeeds my whole team to a certain degree. Uh, he just decides to switch out and goes to Skarmory. And Skarmory is a Pokemon do not fear. I'm definitely going to go for Stealth Rocks on my own. as I only see him bring a Stealth Rocks himself. And Stealth Rocks is not that big of a deal for me to be dealing with. As he goes directly for Brave Bird, predicting a possible switch out here to get some residual damage. I'm sure, And yeah, that didn't, clear, didn't work at all. As uh, I'm gonna go for a smackdown here because I need to get that thing going. Uh, unlucky for me though, he's gonna show me defog, and that's not good. That's not good at all. Since I, I stated I need the rocks up, so with that said, I'm gonna try to go for stealth rocks again as he brings in Lando. Now, versus Lando, I really don't have a proper switching directly, so all I'm really gonna do is, I, I can survive an earthquake for this range, and Avalanche, if he goes for an earthquake, is a guaranteed KO, even at minus one. But he is actually specially offensive, and goes for Earth Power, and I'm not gonna take that, I'm not gonna take that at all. Um, it does show me Life Portal, so it's not Share Force boosts, surprisingly, since of course Intimidate and whatnot. Of course he isn't, uh, because of Intimidate. So I can force him out at least, and I'm gonna go directly for Hidden Power Eyes. Very, very, very predictable me, for sure. But the thing is here, he brings in Victini. Victini cannot take a Shadow Ball. If it is the Scarf variant, it cannot take a Shadow Ball from this range. So I'm gonna directly go for it as it switches out, probably realizing that he's kind of pushing the spot. As it brings in Slurpuff, now here's the thing with Slurpuff, as long as it doesn't set up, it is no threat. And we see the Citrus Berry, so we're gonna activate Unburden on it. 
The thing is here, due to quick feed, we are still faster, and Thunderbolt might very well KO for this range, depending on his set. So we go for the Thunderbolt, sadly we do strike out on KO, luckily for us though, he goes for Drain Punch over Play Rough. Play Rough would have pushed us a bit over uh, 50, or 50 HP, so that would have been the stronger play, but he does try to you know, predict here, and it almost worked, as I can safely go for Shadow Ball. KO in the slope up really early, and that's really good, because that means we don't have the bird up. We're about unburdened, and quite frankly, due to quick feed, we are in a really decent spot. So he's gonna bring Jungle Fever, and yeah, Earthquake seems very likely here. It was either that or go directly for a Giga Dream. So I'm gonna bring in Isolde. Isolde is not doing anything primarily this Wife of Bell outside of Aurora Veil. So with that in mind, all I really want here is to, first of all, nerf his possible synthesis, because that is something I really, well, I clearly need. And outside of getting Aurora Veil, I'm knowing that nothing necessarily will hurt us with that in mind. Uh, because that means I can set up with my guard charm. So we see the earthquake. It is showing us that it's definitely not invested in the earthquake or in physical damage. So I I do fear the sludge bomb coming my way. But at the same time, we do get the veil up, which is all I want because that means that we can survive the sludge bomb, though not necessarily that well. Now I can decide whether or not I should keep this Pokemon or not. But I really wanted, like I said, it had received damage towards the jungle fever as he kept going for sludge bomb. I'm feeling that. You know, I could switch into Metagross, so I felt that you know, maybe he goes to Gidrain, if so, I'm going actually to survive it. But he didn't do that, he went for stronger play, but the positive part here that is that we can easily set up towards it. Now, I was surprised he stayed in it because Earthquake is a guaranteed KO, and I felt it would have made more sense to bring in Skarmory, but it shows me Hidden Power Ice, and it does a fair amount of damage. As you guys can see, the hail is not helping me all that much. So we're forced here to actually go for the damage. As I go for Earthquake, which might actually have been the worst play, because here comes the obvious play, which is a Skarmory. Now, luckily for me here, Fire Blast and a plus two, um, <laughs> plus two Drake UMC does the same amount of damage. So with that in mind, we're going to go for the Devastating Drake instead, because, like I said, it does the same, and quite frankly, this is a more secure hit. Uh, and, you know, the role here was basically, if it is defensive, I will do roughly around 80%, so I should be able to KO, well... I do strike out on a KO, and quite frankly, I kind of do a lot less than I thought I would. So, yeah, he did get a fairly decent roll here as so a cell rocks arrived, but it doesn't doesn't matter necessarily anything, as we do, of course, secure the Fire Blast here. He's going to actually, from this point, go to the Lando T, which I felt was strange at first, because I kind of realized that he's forcing me to... Uh, to go for the Outrage, basically, or sack something. And I, I need to sack Garchomp due to this, so we're gonna KO the Lando, uh, because we know it is specially oriented and not f defensive, we can easily KO. What this does allow him, though, is since I'm locked into Outrage, that he can go Hidden Power Ice, easily KO me, and that really, really does suck. But the beneficial part is, either he's garbed or he's not, and a return is a guaranteed KO no matter what, so that's all I'm really gonna go for. Um, he has no way of switching out here, he has no way of KO me either with a possible Focus Blast. So we do outspeed her, which is really nice, and Adamant Return is going to just ruin the, the, the Raichu, because it should. Raichu is brittle as a, well, as a grass scroll, basically. So Victini comes in. Now, from this point, I really can't predict anything. I can't risk either Jolteon nor Metagross. At this point, I need to sack, sadly, Tifa, as it is Scarfed. And um, the positive part here is that we do outspeed it. The other positive part is that no matter how it plays here, Shadow Ball is a 2-hit KO when the Venusaur comes in, and it's a guaranteed KO on the Victini. So uh, Victini does fall. It's nothing to it. Modest Shadow Ball is just mwah, mwah, dead. Um, so his last Pokemon here is the Venusaur, and I need to play a really strange game here, because as stated, Shadow Ball is a 2-hit KO. He either go for the Earthquake or he go for Synthesis. And at this point, all I really could do is go for the Shadow Ball, hoping it goes for Earthquake or Synthesis. Sadly, um, Tesla has just played the game he always does, which is trying to uh, fatten himself out for victory. Now, with that in mind, all I'm really going to do is keep going for Shadow Balls. I'm basically counting his Synthesis. Uh, at this point, I do get two special defense drops on him, so that's really good for me, because that means that he can't get in full HP without necessarily, well, being put in a spot, because here's the thing. Shadow Ball puts him in range where Sen Headbutt will KO, so I really need him to get the damage onto him, so Sen Headbutt is guaranteed KO if he's a speedier Venusaur, but he's already shown me that he's specially defensively capable, so Sen Headbutt shouldn't be a guaranteed KO if he's a full HP, but as stated, I should be able to force him down to a spot where I can guarantee to kind of ruin him. So he keeps going for Synthesis, and I do believe I kind of switch out on the sixth one. I really needed to be that my Jolteon was in a spot where if he somehow was speedy and I screwed up versus him, that uh, at least get one Shadow Ball onto him and Jolteon can guarantee the KO. 
So I do believe he switched out on his sixth or seventh, something like that. As you guys can see, this is the game he plays. I'm in a rage now. Okay, I can survive at least one more flame orb switching if I'm forced to do so. So I'm gonna switch into Metagross, predicting him to keep Cobra Synthesis, just stalling out my burn turns. As that is exactly what it does, and we are speedier here in Venusaur. He has a no investment. That's if he has one, it's not enough. And the Sen Headbutt pushes him very, very, very low. Now he goes for the Earthquake. And we see that he's definitely defensive over special defensive for sure. But the positive part here is that it doesn't matter because the Sen Headbutt really, really put him with a crit of mine, of course, in range where he just gets destroyed. And he has nowhere to synthesis all that out. And we get to victory 2 0 versus Tesla Mouse. So, yeah, GG Tesla Mouse. Um, I mean, what can I say here that hasn't really been showcased? Um, Tesla Mouse was debating whether or not going to Landers directly versus the Garchomp was the right play. We should have gone for right tune instead. Uh, I would debate that actually going to Lando T was the stronger play, but it has a lot to do with that it forced me to go for an Outrage. Uh, I would not have sacked my Garchomp versus the right show, which is switching, of course, my Lopunny. And quite frankly, Lopunny would not have taken too much damage. So it was, you know, Focus Blast to this natural bulky, well, bulky stats. That said, though, you know, that's always a thing one kind of have to watch out for. I do definitely agree with Tesla Mouse that, you know, that was a tough play, whether or not they should have done it. I think going to Lando was overall the better because that meant that was forced to sack our jump while the other one wasn't. And uh, yeah, outside of that, you know, as you guys saw, the synthesis plays there in the end, the, it looks really stalling. And usually this is something that Tesla Mouse does. He tries to survive it by actually recovering to be as much or as good as an environment as possible versus... Of course, the upcoming matchup, which would have been a Metagross, which he wouldn't be able to resolve, yet he didn't knew that at the time. So I get what he was trying to do, and quite frankly, I did try to kind of kind of taunt him to KO me, so I didn't have to risk uh, Metag Metagross missing this number because that's always an option that can happen. You no know, hacks is always a factor. So I believe that was a stronger overall play, even though it looks really boring. But this is something that Tesla Mouse has perfected, and uh, little did he know it actually could have worked had I missed this and headbutt. But as you guys saw. Um, I do get two, uh, one crit there, but it still would have been a 2 hit kill, but I needed to connect the two Sen Headbutts with that in mind. And, you know, the obvious thing she would definitely be stated that at the damage it did to me, he would not have been able to 3 hit KO me with the Earthquake. So that was something I definitely was feeling relieved about, because that means that matchup could have gone on for a while, but it wouldn't have ruined me had I failed due to, well, let's face it, his synthesis was running out anyway. <laughs> At that point, he used his last one. Uh, but yeah, Tesla Mouse is always thinking of the game. Really fun battling you again. Um, always as difficult as always to play against you. Well, very lucky. I think this is the second time I beat him and he beat me like six or four. I think six times. So it's a very rare occurrence to see me win against him. So I'm, I'm glad. I definitely needed a victory for a possible playoff. I only have one more game left now. I really need to win that one too if I really want to secure a playoff spot. So, with that in mind, as always, thank you guys for watching, and, well, I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care.